question. What do attractive women like these have to do with the Russian-Ukraine war? In this video, we're going to debunk common myths about the Russian-Ukraine war using objective facts that even attractive bimbos in bikinis who know nothing about the war can easily confirm without going into crazy conspiracies. This is very important because we live in the age of information warfare, and every time something important is pointed out about the Russian-Ukraine war, supporters of either side who disagree with it will instead of addressing the actual issue try to shut down the conversation by saying it's propaganda and avoid addressing the actual point. Or they'll use really stupid excuses and myths that are easily debunkable in an attempt to justify why their side is totally winning. That's why I'm going to dumb down the conversation so much and prove my points using reason and logic that is so simple, even bimbos will be able to figure it out. Myth 1. Vladimir Putin was prepared for a long war. Russia convinced much of their population and the West into believing that an attack on Ukraine would be swift and deadly. Some analysts even claimed that everything would be over within a lightning quick three days. This myth was initially very helpful for the Kremlin in making Ukraine seem destined to be subservient. A nation of 44 million could seem like an intimidating task to invade if Russians were to think of them as brave, heroic, and willing to put their lives on the line for the country. Well, objectively, looking at the facts, it's been at least six months now, and even someone who has just come out of a coma will be able to tell you easily that Putin wasn't prepared for a long war. Let me prove this to you by using objective facts and reasoning so simple, even hot bimbos with room temperature IQs can understand. Firstly, unless Putin was a complete moron and none of his generals had any experience in war, whether in real life or a computer game, it's a pretty well-known fact that you need a 3 to 1 advantage as an attacker to win an invasion. Russian sources reported that Putin had around 250,000 troops at the border of Ukraine. The Ukrainians also had around 200,000 to 250,000 soldiers at the time defending the nation. So, if Russia really was prepared for an actual war and a long one, he would have amassed at the very bare minimum three times the number of Ukrainians. Why didn't Putin and his generals do that? Was it because they were complete idiots and didn't know this? Or was it more likely they miscalculated and thought this would be a repeat of 2014 in Crimea again? Past behavior is not the best predictor of the future, but it is the only one you can use as a reference. It's much more likely that Putin saw how the Ukrainians just surrendered back in 2014 when he invaded. This time it would also be very similar and Zelensky would flee and Ukraine would surrender without a real fight. This theory can further be backed up by the fact that Russia didn't target any of Ukraine's critical target infrastructure initially locked. when they invaded Kiev. They didn't target power stations target and their electricity. Locked. This would only make logical sense if the Russians thought that they could easily conquer Ukraine in three days so they didn't need to ruin the entire city that they thought they were going to occupy in just a few days anyway. And to further prove this point, we can see what happens to a city when the Russians think they are not going to take it within a few days. Case in point would be Maripol, where Putin bombed the entire city into nothing but rubble. Myth 2. Russia is saving their best soldiers and equipment. This is a funny myth, because even after more than six months of fighting, Russian supporters seem to think that Putin has a secret card up his sleeve. It's as if Putin is still waiting to unleash his dragon on the Ukrainians, and just any minute now, it'll be over. I mean, if this were true, then Putin is really a big piece of crap. And if I was a Russian supporter, I would be furious at Putin if he indeed had these weapons that were decades ahead of everyone else but refuses to use them, because this means he's literally letting thousands of his own men die or get wounded daily on purpose. But the fact of the matter is this. Apart from using nuclear weapons, which would absolutely guarantee the Kremlin itself to be Target nuked by the West, locked. the Russians have already given the best they have. Let's just use basic logic that even hot bimbos can understand. If you were Putin and you knew thousands of your own soldiers were dying daily, and the war that you created is resulting in Western sanctions that are negatively impacting trade on your economy, and that each day you fight this war, that's an extra day for your country not contributing to the economy, and knowing that the longer the war drags on, the higher likelihood your soldiers will need to be fighting an aggressive war during the Russian winter. And let's pretend you in fact did have super advanced ninja military equipment that could easily end the war. What would you do? A. End the war of attrition immediately by using them, or B. Not ending the war of attrition by not using them. I think anyone with half a brain knows the answer to this question. Long wars of attrition are good for nobody, especially if you're the aggressor. Myth 3. Russia has the second strongest military in the world. At the beginning of 2022, most people thought that Russia had the second strongest military in the world. Undoubtedly, the Kremlin was more than happy with people believing this. 
but it's been more than six months, and they are still struggling to beat Ukraine, who was ranked 22nd in the world before the war. If Russia was as strong as they like to make out, though, then the invasion wouldn't have been dragging on for months and months. Now, Russian supporters will jump in and be like, but Ukraine has the support of NATO in using U.S. weapons, therefore they can stand against Russia. Remember, what? the claim before the war was that the Russian military was supposed to be strong enough to give Americans a run for their money. Now these people are changing the goalpost to, the Russian military is having a hard time defeating Ukrainians who got a few weeks of training using weapons given to them from the West they had never seen in their lives up until a few weeks ago. Holy heck! If that's true, then can you imagine how insanely powerful the Americans and the West actually are? Because they actually have the experience and know-how to use their own equipment to full strategic capabilities. The fact of the matter is, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say, after more than six months of fighting, even a hot, dumb bimbo who can't identify America on a map can see that obviously the Russian military is not ranked second in the world. Myth 4 Russia can be easily defeated in Ukraine and Russia is 100% guaranteed to lose. I'm not saying Russia cannot be defeated. I believe Russia indeed can be defeated. However, I am saying that it is a myth that Russia can be easily defeated in Ukraine. Right now, I'm thinking the odds are 55% in favor of the Ukrainians forcing Putin to come to a peace agreement that Ukraine accepts. However, this is only possible if the West continues their support. Please understand, this is not going to be an easy fight for the Ukrainians. Because of the slow Russian progress in Ukraine, now Ukrainian supporters are running around saying that Russia can be easily defeated. This also needs to be debunked. Just because Ukraine has held out for so long, some people have started to believe that Russia's defeat is 100% inevitable. As much as I support Ukraine, and I'm against a Russian invasion, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Putin's military in Ukraine is a very real threat, and it's important not to get complacent. That is why it's extremely important that the West keeps sending in more support and shows their support for Ukraine. As much as I would not like to see this, it is still very much possible that by the end of the conflict, Russia can claim victory. There is a possibility that exists where even with Western support in the form of billions of dollars and tons of elite weapons, Ukraine might need to raise the white flag. That is why the West needs to keep sanctions on Russia and hurt their economy so much to put them in a situation where it will have to become too unbearable for Russia to press on. Even bimbos in bikinis with no brains can understand the basic logic where if a country has no ability to produce weapons of war because they are forbidden to trade, then eventually that country has no other choice but to stop their war. Myth number five, Russia has air superiority over Ukraine. If Russia's air force was as strong as they initially like to make out, then the army wouldn't struggle so much with capturing and holding airports in Ukraine. The botched attempt to capture Gostomil around 20 kilometers from Kiev was a disaster for Moscow, as Russia desperately needed it to receive large amounts of airborne troops and planes. So, why is the Russian Air Force doing so badly? Well, corruption and poor training is the answer. Things were an absolute disaster in the 1990s, with many Russian fighter pilots only having 10 to 20 hours of annual experience. The state of affairs has improved slightly from that dismal state 25 years ago, but still, the Russian Air Force is almost a joke compared to what some of the Western military forces have to offer. In particular, Russia's array of stealth combat aircraft is laughable compared to the West. And, objectively, even bimbos in bikinis with no brains can show you that the Russian Air Force is bad. I mean, it's more than six months already, and Russia still hasn't gained air superiority in Ukraine, and Putin's men are now getting devastated by HIMAR rockets daily. This would not have happened if the Kremlin owned the skies uncontested. Myth number six. Russians were going to be seen as liberators when they entered Ukraine. It is almost like Russia began to believe their own BS preparing so little for an invasion that has shown Ukrainians never had any intention of welcoming their invaders. Russian propaganda at the time was saying that the Ukrainians would greet them as liberators with flowers. I guess this is kind of true if you look at this meme. Whilst there has been a mixed reception in Ukraine's east, the further the Russian armies have gone west, the stronger the resistance has become. The idea now that the Ukrainian people were ever going to bend over and accept their invaders violating them now seems like a massive joke, as Putin desperately tries to wrap the war up before the punishing Russian winner arrives. And if it does come round to winter and fighting is still ongoing, then the Russian troops are going to need far better equipment than they have access to now. 
Now, objectively speaking, even bimbos and bikinis who have no idea about anything to do with war can tell you, if you were told you're going to be the liberators, but after more than six months of fighting with the people you're supposed to be liberating, then it's most likely that you're seen as the invader. Mm. Myth number seven. Russians are using advanced high-tech military equipment. At the beginning of the invasion, Russian authorities were keen to flood social media with pictures of bulletproof ninja-looking armor that made Russian fighters look like indestructible terminators. Pictures from the actual battlefields quickly showed that even the idea of Russian forces being competently equipped were severely exaggerated to say the least. Images taken by Ukrainian forces of Russian equipment from the front lines have shown that some of the invading troops have been marching around using bulletproof vests made from literal cardboard. Now, it's impossible to know exactly what military technology Russia is working on at any given time, but it seems very unlikely that the economically broken country is purposely sending bulletproof vests made from cardboard on purpose. What's more likely is that the funds allocated to buy Kevlar bulletproof vests were stolen, and instead the corrupt officials figure stuffing the jackets with cardboard on the inside would pass inspections. And then there's this. What you are seeing is a photo of Russian servicemen in front of the Russian Z flag showing off their equipment that they bought from a civilian fundraising campaign. So, Russian soldiers in Ukraine appear to be crowdsourcing their own equipment, including medical supplies and GPS kits. Postings on Russian language telegram groups are calling for donations to pay for kits for frontline troops, including weapon sites, multi-tools, and red dot targeting equipment. They even asked for money to buy first aid kits with syringes, painkilling injections, and frontline medications. If you thought the Russian military was a force to be reckoned with, you haven't seen their ability to use telegrams to raise money to buy made-in-China equipment for their amazing military. And even a bimbo with no brains can agree that if their troops are literally crowdsourcing and begging for money to buy equipment to participate in a war that their government doesn't even recognize is going on, even though they started it, you can bet that the Russians are not using the best equipment.